Right, let me explain what I'm trying to do. I pay a ridiculous amount of money every month for a Sky HD subscription for a lot of channels that I don't watch. I like the option of not watching those channels in my lounge here, but I'd also like to have the choice of not watching them in my conservatory, which is all the way down here, only approximately 20 feet away from that lounge television. Now, this television doesn't have any wires attached to it other than a power source. And the way I went about this before was incredibly complicated. I put together a YouTube video two years ago explaining how I went about transmitting the signals from my upstairs skybox, which is this one here, to that television. I used a sling box. That's attached to the back of the skybox using S-Video and Phono leads. It converts the signal and sends it down a network cable, which is attached to my Apple AirPort Extreme Wireless base station that transmits it over wireless 5 GHz N to this Acer Aspire Revo Windows 7 PC that's attached to the back of the television in the conservatory that I control with this Lenovo remote control. It's an incredibly complicated system that no one understands other than me. What I'd really want to do is just point a Sky remote control at that television and have it operate as though the skybox was attached to it via an HDMI lead. Now I could of course attach a really long HDMI lead and send it all the way from the lounge but I've got some walls and doorways and solid floors and things to contend with and also I need a way of transmitting the remote control signal back to the skybox. Well all's not lost because recently wireless HDMI has come down in price an awful lot so let's try out a WHDI solution that I picked up for about £120, although this was in a sale, you'll probably find these between £130 and £160. So let's have a look what you get inside the box. Well, first off, I'm in the UK, so I get two UK power adapters. They're both identical, they're 5 volts, 2.5 amps. There's an infrared extender lead. There's a remote control. There's one HDMI lead. There's the instruction booklet. And then there's the transmitter and receiver devices. This is the transmitter, as you can see on the front there. It's not a particularly attractive box. Let's have a look at it. There's an on-off switch there that you can slide up and down. It's got a little thing there that says link. I think that's got some LEDs behind it. It's got a rubber base here and this leg that spins out so you can stand it up. The HDMI in is on the back there. The infrared hole for the plugging that wire in and the power adapter. Pretty simple. Now let's just look at the receiver. Very similar box, the same spin-out leg, the same on-off switch. Uh, it's got a thing there that says IR, so that's where you point your remote control at. And on this one, it's got an HDMI out and the power in. Now, even though this is the receiver, it's also a transmitter because you point your remote control at that IR window there. It transmits your infrared remote control signals wirelessly to the transmitter box, sends them out over this cable to this other infrared emitter, which transmits your infrared remote control signals to the source device. So you can operate it as though you were in the same room. Now, one thing that I thought smacked of penny pinching a bit was the fact they only included one HDMI lead. I mean, it's all right for this chap over here, but this poor sod, you'll have to go and source your own HDMI lead for that one. Luckily, I've got a few lying around the house, but I thought it was a bit mean. Right, so let's see how this fits together. Well, the Sky HD box only has one HDMI out on it, and that one's already taken up going to the television. Now, luckily for me, I've got an AV receiver that splits the signal to two HDMI out, so I can send one to the television and one to the transmitter. But if you don't have that, you'll have to go and pick up your own two-port HDMI splitter to use as well. So on my setup, all I'm going to do is plug this spare HDMI lead into the transmitter, plug the power lead into the back of the transmitter as well, and that infrared emitter, and that's also going in the transmitter. And so this is the box that's staying at the source next to the Sky HD box in the lounge and that transmitter is going there to better send the signals through to the IR port on it. Now this is the receiver, here's an HDMI lead that I found and that's plugged into the back of the television here and then I go back to the start, turn it on, see the red light there and switch the receiver on and let's have a look at the screen and see what happens. Now look at the top left there, it says connecting to well, a load of letters, I think that's the name, internal name of the box in the lounge. And there you go, it's on. 
which was a bit of a surprise. It works fine. I suppose I shouldn't really be so surprised when something does what it's supposed to do, but for some reason I still am. Now the remote control works fine as well. As long as you remember to point it directly at the box, it's quite directional. It works fair enough. It's almost as though you've got the sky box attached to the bottom of the television. Now one thing I did notice though, there was a little bit of mosquito noise as they call it. If you see here around the letters, it gets a little bit grainy, whereas on the television in the lounge, which is the one you're looking at now, the source, there isn't that kind of level of disruption around those letters. But when you sit a normal distance away, it's not noticeable at all. I'm only pixel peeping. Now that remote control doesn't really do an awful lot. You don't really need to use it. The only time you do use it is to change some of the settings. You can change the name of the source like I've done here so that when I turn it on it says connecting to Sky HD rather than TX blah 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 blah, blah whatever it said before. One thing that I thought would be a good test would be to try and play a game over the wireless connection. I was interested to find out if it introduced any lag in the signal which would make the games difficult or impossible to play. So I turned on the Xbox 360 in the lounge, picked up my wireless controller and headed off to the conservatory. I thought it'd be a good idea to put something on that people are familiar with so I put Call of Duty on and I'm normally terrible at this game, but even I managed to get a two-person kill streak, which was rather impressive for me. So I didn't notice any lag whatsoever, and the game played fine throughout. I didn't notice any blocking or graininess, or any of that mosquito noise that I mentioned before. I even tried a shoot -em up just to see if there really was any delay whatsoever, because this kind of thing would be very noticeable in a game like this. And I could play fine for minutes at a time without dying so that's quite impressive now the next thing that i tried was to send the wireless signal from upstairs at the front of the house to the back of the house now what i had to do there is put the wireless transmitter on the floor for some reason that was the only way the signal was received but when it was it worked fine i was rather restricted in the placement of the transmitter by the infrared lead because it's rather short as you can see from this picture here, I've got the transmitter as far away as I can get it from that skybox while still keeping that infrared emitter lead attached. If I wanted it any further away, I'd have to splice some wire into it. And another thing I should mention, these boxes are a little bit unstable. That HDMI lead tends to drag on the back of them. But overall, I'm very impressed with these wireless HDMI boxes. They do exactly what I wanted them to do, and it's a much better solution than my previous one. It's almost as though I've got another sky box in the conservatory. I probably wouldn't use these on screens of maybe more than 32 inches. I think you might notice some artifacts, but on smaller size screens, they work great. Now, these are unbranded boxes. You might find them online with different names, if you search for WHDI, you'll find a few alternatives. But all that remains for me now is to say thanks for watching.